The Danger of Pride Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, New King James Version Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. In English, the word pride can have a good sense. For example, we would not say it's wrong for a person to be proud of their children or take pride in their work. This is known as health pride. However, when the Bible talks about pride, it means something different from this and has very negative connotations. It means having an excessively high opinion of one's own worth or importance. It suggests arrogance or overbearing conduct. It is the independent spirit that says, I have no need of God. Arguably, therefore, it is at the root of all sin. How should we respond to the temptation and dangers of pride? Pride is a particular temptation for anyone in a position of power, whether that power comes from status, success, fame, or wealth. For one to find out, one needs to examine themselves under the microscopic eye of the Word of God's. What is God asking us to do in examining ourselves with the Word? 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28 says, But let a man examine himself. Examine, in Greek, is dokimazo, which means to prove, to test, to determine if a metal is pure. It connotes approval rather than condemnation. Our self-evaluation is an honest inspection to see if we are progressing as God expects us to. He wants us to see what the attitude of our heart is. When Paul says, examine yourself, he does not refer to an out-of-body experience, yet it could be likened to that. God wants us to stand to one side and look at ourselves, making an honest evaluation of our progress over the past year. Hence the term, esteem others better than self. Some of us do not truly realize what a wonderful season this is. We can fool ourselves all year long by rarely studying, praying sporadically, and maintaining our vices. But if we remotely care what God thinks of us, we are forced to face our true natures in this self-examination. God wants us to do this for our own good. He wants us to see what we need to work on and change. He wants us to worship him in spirit and truth. He wants us to be honest in our evaluation. Though we often dredge up past problems and old feelings from the childhood of which we have long ago repented, God wants us to examine our present state. We must look for flaws we have now and seriously and positively make the necessary changes in our lives. Jesus Christ, our standard of measure. Of course, we measure ourselves against Jesus Christ, the perfect man who possesses all the fruit of God's spirit according to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. These qualities are aspects of God's character that we all need to have and use in order to overcome or suppress pride. Agape love, outgoing concern for others, true concern for all of mankind. It is not self-centered, doing for others what is right, despite their character, appearance, social status, etc. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Joy, related to happiness, only happiness requires right circumstances, where joy does not. Jesus Christ felt joy, though he faced heavy trials, according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. We should all be joyful, having been called by God. Peace, peace of mind and peace with God, according to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Long-suffering. Bearing with others who are working out their salvation and being slow to anger, according to Romans chapter 15, verse 1, and Luke chapter 21, verse 19. Kindness. Behaving toward others kindly as God has behaved towards us, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 through 32. Goodness. Generosity of spirit that springs from imitating Jesus Christ. Psalm 33, verses 4 and 5. Faithfulness. Being reliable. This describes a person who is trustworthy and will always stand up for God's way. 
we can count on and should work at imitating the faithfulness of God. According to Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 and Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Gentleness. Considerate and tactful in conduct and correction. Never angry at the wrong time. According to Matthew chapter 5 verses 22 through 24 and Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. Self-control. Discipline which gives us victory over the wrong pulls of our mind and body, according to 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Ways of self-examination. We generally take one of two approaches to self-examination. The first is something on the order of, I'm no good. I've never lived up to my expectations. I'm just worthless. Some of us hail from some pretty painful backgrounds. Others have been told they were useless from childhood and had a very low opinion of themselves. Many have just had terrible experiences that have left scars, making accurate self-examination very difficult. We may not like ourselves, and we wonder how anyone else could like us, especially God. We may look at ourselves at the plethora of mistakes that dot our past and judge ourselves harshly. In some cases, We feel we are unworthy to take the Passover. The second approach to self-examination is just the opposite. Here, we give ourselves a quick once-over and go on our way. Like the man in James chapter 1 verse 23 who looks in the mirror, sees what he is but immediately forgets, some of us fail to give our lives a thorough evaluation. We may think, well, in Romans 7, it shows that Paul sinned. He didn't want to, but the sin in him caused him to. Man will never be perfect until the return of Christ. If Paul couldn't overcome sin, then I guess that God knows that we really can't get out all the sin. I'll try, but if it's too hard, I'm sure that God will understand. A person who uses this approach may feel he is taking the Passover seriously, but in fact has not done a proper self-examination. A sincere self-examination costs us something. We may clearly see where changes are needed, but the price of those changes is painful. The less we want to make the changes we must make, the more it hurts. In spite of how we feel about examining ourselves, God still wants us to honestly review our lives this past year and make the needed changes. As we go to God in prayer and fasting, asking him to help us see ourselves, we must remember that God loves us to the full. Even if we find a major problem area, God is ready and eager to forgive us upon repentance and change. He knows and understands the trials and pressures we face in this end time. Matthew chapter 23 verse 12 says, For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And Galatians chapter 6 verse 3 says, If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves.